All right, so now we're going to do a Taylor series example. Taylor series example. And uh, for this example, we're going to let, let f of x equal the sine of x and a equals zero. Now, you'll notice that this is the special case. This is the Maclaurin series where a equals zero. And uh, we're going to do this because uh, it makes the math easy. And, and the whole purpose of this example is to get an idea of how this really works. And so, uh, as I did before, I've sort of typed all this out. So, uh, uh, the first thing that we need to do, uh, if you'll recall, our, 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 uh, our equation, right, was uh, um, the sum from n equals 0 uh, to infinity of f uh, to the n of a all over uh, n factorial times uh, x minus a all to the n, right? And so since this is our equation, uh, one of the first things that we need to do is we need to figure out what this term is. We need to, we need to evaluate our derivatives. And so we have the, the, first, the first one is, is just our, our derivative term, uh, our, um, excuse me, not the derivative, this is just our function. And then we have the first derivative, the first derivative of the sine. So the derivative of the sine is the cosine. And so uh, we can also evaluate the cosine at a, uh, which is zero, the cosine of zero is one. Uh, we could take the second derivative uh, at a, the, the derivative of the cosine is the negative sine. And the negative sine, uh, well, the sine evaluated at, at zero is zero, and so it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. The third derivative uh, the, the, is just the derivative of the, the, the second derivative. So, so we have the derivative of the sine uh, is the cosine, and, and that negative term uh, stays here. And so the derivative of the sine is the cosine. We evaluate that at, at zero, and the, 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 the cosine of zero is one, and, we still and then we still have that sine term here. So we have to carry that through, uh, and then and then we get back to when we take the derivative of the cosine. The derivative of the cosine is the negative sign, and so we we drop this negative sign here because we have negative and negative, and and so we go back to the sine of a, and and we can see here that now it starts to repeat. So the general pattern here goes zero one zero minus one zero one zero minus one, and so this is what's going to happen to these terms here, our derivative terms, in when we expand our our series. Uh, the next thing that we can look at is what's going to happen uh, to to this term, this term here, and we're going to realize that that since a is zero, it's just going to be x to the n, right? And then and then n factorial, we just we'll just recall for for the low ones, zero factorial equals one, um, one factorial a equals one, and then uh, we'll just write all the other ones out. <sighs> Uh, leave them in factorial terms so that uh, 13 factorial we just we'll just leave that as 13 factorial rather than simplifying and getting big numbers that we don't remember where they came from. So as we do that, uh, uh, we can see uh, running through the expansion here. Okay, uh, let's let's follow along here. Uh, we have uh, f of zero is is zero. Okay, uh, then we have uh, we plugging in or plugging in our first derivative that was one you'll recall and so then we're going to have one over one factorial uh, is going to is is going to be multiplied by x and so x is the only the only factor that remains uh, that's unique and and of course it was zero plus x right because because this term came down into here uh, not not into the to the x term but uh, so we're not confusing here that's this whole term okay. Uh, and then, and then again, okay, we have this, and then, and then we just have have that. That's coming down uh, to take the place of this term here, whoop, right there. And, and then the only additional thing we have on that is is this term. And since our derivative is zero and it's multiplicative, that's just going to wipe out this term, and uh, it's just going to 
carry through exactly what we had before. I'll, I'll note this this happens with the sine function, but it this doesn't generally happen. I mean, it, it could happen, but this doesn't generally happen where we have uh, this term uh, uh, because of the derivative is zero. If the derivative is zero, yes, the term gets wiped out, but that's not uh, generally the case. Uh, it, it could happen, it may not happen. Uh, just note that. Okay, so as we continue on here, we can plug that in, and then we have this other term, minus uh, 1 over 3 factorial x cubed. Okay, so that's just going to be x then minus x cubed over 3 factorial. Uh, again, having our zero derivative here uh, uh, doesn't uh, makes makes it so this term is is this entire term is zero, and so we just have what we had before. That just gets carried on here. Uh, we have uh, then our, our fifth order term, so we're just going to have x to the fifth over 5 factorial get get added on here. So we have just what we had before plus this, this x to the fifth over 5 factorial term. Uh, and then it, it continues on uh, just because of the behavior and the repetitive behavior that we observed before where we get... We, we, we add one and then we subtract one and add one and subtract one and every other term gets wiped out. And so uh, for, for 13th order approximation, that leaves us with uh, with all of these terms all the way up to our x to the 13 over 13 factorial. And then, of course, uh, we'll note that, that if we kept going on to infinity, uh, this, this would, would keep going. This is just an approximation. This is the 13th order approximation. And, uh, and so we have to keep that in mind. Now, now we're ready to look at what happens when we plot this guy out. And uh, again, I spared you from, from my drawings, and, and I've just gone ahead and plotted this out. Uh, the first thing we're going to look at is is we have the sine of x, the sine of x right here. That's that's our function, f of x, right? And then uh, using the notation uh, that we have here, then then we could just we can just follow that down here. So our first order approximation. We're going to bother drawing this zeroth order or, or the the second order or the fourth order because. Uh, we would just have lines on top of each other. That's not really going to do us any good. Well, we, we could do the zeroth order, and the zeroth order would just be this line here. Okay, but of course, that's our first order approximation, which is going to be, we're going to call that f1 of x, right? Uh, our second order approximation is the same thing. Our third, our third order approximation is uh, this guy here. This is our third order f3 of x. And notice what's going on here. Uh, our first order approximation was was actually pretty good uh, from right in here to right in here. Our third order approximation is good a little bit longer, right from here all the way into here. Uh, our our fifth order approximation. Let's let's look. Uh, let's grab. This is a little difficult to see on here. Our fifth order approximation. It goes from he, like here to here. It's good. It's good even longer. Uh, our seventh order approximation. That's good a little bit longer. You'll see here, uh, maybe from here to here. Our uh, ninth order approximation, we get even a little bit more. And you see what's happening here. As we add terms, uh, our approximation is good for, for a greater and a greater and a greater range. And that's, that's what hens, tends to happen with uh, the Taylor series approximation. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, if we just had a polynomial function in here, as soon as our polynomial, as soon as we have enough terms in the Taylor series, we can actually approximate our polynomial exactly, and all of the higher order terms uh, become zero, and there is no error in the approximation. Uh, so, uh, so we could actually uh, truncate this, and, and we would have no error in the approximation if we were doing a polynomial approximation, because the Taylor series is a polynomial, uh, is a polynomial. So uh, that's it. That's that's what we got. But, but this is the big this is the big thing. You you need to remember this picture. If you don't remember anything else from what we've talked about, uh, remember this picture because this picture shows what's happening with the Taylor series. It shows that as we get additional terms uh, farther and farther. Remember, this is a right here, right? This is our a. Uh, we could have expanded about this point, and all that would have done is it would have shifted all these all these uh, approximations. They would have they would have started at this point, but we still would have had all of our approximations, and we would have expanded them out uh, at any point. Uh, for example, I mean, you can see this this is exactly the same. This is just the 
the sign shifted over and all the derivatives are the same and, and, and we could have started at any point a uh, we just chose to start at a equals zero in, in this case.